All right, so in this video, we're going to continue our discussion on molecular orbital theory by talking about the molecular orbitals of the H2 molecule. So remember that these molecular orbitals, these are actually uh, linear combinations uh, of atomic orbitals. Or the, the approximations for the molecular orbitals, rather, is a linear combination of atomic orbitals, which is a weighted linear, linear sum of the valence atomic orbitals of all of the atoms in a molecule. So H2 is a very simple case because a hydrogen atom uh, just has one electron, and that one electron sits in a 1s orbital. So the orbitals that we're linearly combining here to form molecular orbitals, these, these are just going to be uh, the 1s orbitals in the case of uh, hydrogen or in the case of H2, rather. So if I have uh, a 1s orbital that combines with another 1s orbital, remember the 1s orbital is shaped like a, like a sphere. So if I have the 1s orbital, or imagine that these black dots are uh, the nuclei. So I have these two uh, spherical 1s orbitals. And so this is a 1s, and this is a 1s. Well, I can combine these two 1s orbitals uh, into one molecular orbital. And that molecular orbital looks like this. And I draw the two nuclei together, shade in the entire thing. So I have two small spherical blobs that form this sort of um, egg-shaped uh, blob here. And this molecular orbital here is called the uh, sigma 1s star molecular orbital. And the letter sigma comes from the shape of the orbital. It's shaped sort of like a sigma bond when you go back to uh, valence bond theory. So that's where the sigma comes from. And the 1s comes from the fact that it's a linear combination of uh, two 1s orbitals. And uh, it's not actually not a sigma 1s star. It's just a, a sigma 1s star. Sorry about that. I jumped the gun a little bit. But the sig this is a sigma 1s orbital. And this orbital is called a bonding molecular orbital. And the reason why it's called a bonding molecular orbital is because it is lower in energy than the two atomic orbitals from which it is formed. So that means that by combining to form the sigma 1s orbital, the electrons are now in a state of lower energy than they were uh, for the individual hydrogen atoms. So and that's good. I mean, uh, chemical systems like to proceed towards the lowest energy. Uh, electrons tend to populate the lowest energy state available. So the bonding molecular orbital is lower in energy. Now, there's another way that uh, two uh, s orbitals can combine. And they can combine in the, the following way. So this is actually a linear combination of, of a 1s and a 1s. Well, what about if we have a linear combination of 1s with the negative of another 1s orbital. So remember that electrons behave like waves. That means that they can constructively or destructively interfere. In other words, they're in phase or out of phase. Now, when we combine them in phase, that resulted in a lower energy bonding molecular orbital. But when we combine, when we combine them out of phase, that actually forms a uh, higher energy orbital that we call an anti-bonding molecular orbital. So the orbital looks a little bit like this. And this orbital is called the sigma 1s star. So this one is the sigma 1s and this one is the sigma 1s star. And the star indicates that this is an anti-bonding molecular orbital. So the anti-bonding molecular orbital is actually higher in energy than the original uh, 1s atomic orbitals. The sigma 1s orbital, the bonding molecular orbital, is actually lower in energy. So we can actually uh, put it all together in the form of a molecular orbital diagram. So the molecular orbital diagram uh, looks sort of like this.
Okay, so in the molecular orbital diagram, we have our uh, atomic orbitals on the outside and our molecular orbitals on the inside. So this is an atomic orbital, or AO. This is an atomic orbital, or AO. And the middle, that's where we have our MOs, our molecular orbitals. So the outside, these, these, uh, these outside portions, these correspond to the individual uh, hydrogen atoms. And in the middle here, we have the H2 molecule. So remember that the ground state uh, electron configuration for a hydrogen atom is 1s1. So that means the electron, there's only one electron in this 1s orbital. And there's also only one electron in this other 1s orbital. So when we combine them together to form molecular orbitals, we're going to populate the lowest energy ones first. So in order to do that, it looks like if we just take both of the electrons and stick them in this sigma 1s orbital, then we'll have just as many electrons in the molecule as we did uh, in the sum of the individual atoms, which is cool. So notice that in the H2 molecule, the only type of orbital that's being populated is the lower energy bonding molecular orbital. Remember the sigma 1s is bonding low energy and the sigma 1s star is anti-bonding higher energy. So that means that if, if all of the electrons are populating the uh, bonding molecular orbital, then we would expect H2 to be a relatively stable molecule because the electrons are in a state of lower energy than they were before when they were individual atoms. And experiments have confirmed this. Now one uh, thing that I'd like to mention about basically how we uh, keep track of the stability of these uh, molecular orbitals or of these molecules from which the molecular orbitals form is uh, with a concept called uh, bond order. And what bond order is, is it's the number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding uh, molecular orbitals. So the number of in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. It's this whole quantity divided by two. So I'll just say multiplied by one half. So I repeat, the bond order is one half times the quantity of the difference between the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals uh, and the number of electrons in anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So in the case of H2, we have the bond order, or BO, is equal to one half times the quantity of the electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals, which is two, minus zero, the number of uh, electrons in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals, and one half of two minus zero, that is equal to one. So generally, if you have a positive bond order, that means that you have a stable molecule and you would predict it to exist in nature. A zero bond order or a negative bond order usually means that the molecule is not stable and that the electrons are better off with the uh, individual atoms. So there you go. Um, in the next video, I'm probably going to talk about uh, molecular orbitals of other um, S-block elements like uh, helium, lithium, and, uh, and so forth. And then in a later video, I'm going to talk about the... Uh, the molecular orbitals that form uh, as a combination of p orbitals. So that's when it gets really interesting. So stay tuned and good luck.